Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Joel Richardson, has such amazing insight into the end times. The prophet Daniel, in the 12th chapter, talks about the end times. Explain what he says. Well, in the conclusion of this incredibly prophetic book, the prophet Daniel uh, made clear, in fact, it was revealed to him by an angel, that all of the things revealed to Daniel, the primary message of this entire book, would literally be sealed up until the end times. And he makes this very clear that when he's speaking about the end times, he's saying the time when the dead, those that sleep in the dust of the earth, are resurrected. This is talking about the end of the age, that at that time, the, the, the understanding of this book would be opened up to the church. And, and I can see how you've been handpicked literally by God to give revelation of the end time. In fact, you were sitting among uh, 7,000 people. Get this, he's sitting around among 7,000 people and the man that is speaking has a word of knowledge but he starts out by even saying Joel's name. What did he say? Well, let me just back up a teeny bit and make mention of something else. Just before my wife and I met, uh, there was a prophetess that prayed over my wife and one of the things she said was she said your husband you'll marry someone that will have significant insight into the end times and he'll release new prophetic understanding concerning the end times to the church and to the world and so my wife and I are sitting in this meeting 7,000 people large civic center type of situation in the, in the very back and before he spoke he said I want to share a prophetic word in order to show that what I'm about to speak on is from the Lord. He called us out by name and then he spoke things to us that no man could know. Things that we've been praying about, things that only we knew that only the Lord, only God could reveal to a man and that gets your attention. And then one of the things that he said was he said that the Lord was going to bring me into a season of divine revelation which I knew intuitively was tied into this word about uh, understanding the end times. And of course, I had no interest in the end times. I'm an incredibly unlikely candidate. Uh, my heart has always been to, uh, I love uh, sharing my f Christian faith with Muslims, and I love reaching out to the poor. And I thought if I ever had a, a ministry, that that's what it would be geared toward. Uh, but somehow the Lord has managed to bring together this love for Muslims, as well as this call to speak about the end times, and he's joined those two together. But what if... Everything we've been talked, taught about in series like The Left Behind or Late Great Planet Earth, the basic premises are wrong. What if, I believe God has raised up Joel, people that understand his teaching, say for the first time, the whole end time scenario makes total sense to me. Uh, Joel, in preparation for this, you spend time in the Middle East. You uh, have studied the scriptures from an Eastern, a Middle Eastern mindset. What difference does this make when you study the scriptures from that mindset versus uh, the West? Well, one of the things that I try to emphasize whenever I'm teaching on these, these issues, uh, particularly when I'm addressing Americans, is I try to address this issue of American centricity, this idea that we have as Americans, whether we articulate it or verbalize it or not, we believe the world revolves around us. And we even, again, we wouldn't quite come out and say it, we believe that the Bible was written primarily for Americans. What I'm trying to do is bring people back to the context of this book so they can understand that this book is first and foremost, is and always has been, Jerusalem, Israel, and a Middle Eastern centric book and that includes the subject of biblical prophecy that the epicenter of all biblical prophecy is the Middle East so when we try to as Westerners try to read our world view into the prophetic scriptures the prophecies of the Bible we often make mistakes we read things into this context that don't belong so if you're sitting in Jerusalem today the primary uh, spirit that is coming against the Jewish people, uh, coming against the people of God, is the spirit of Islam. Now here in the West we have other spirits that we're contending with, but we need to be careful not to read our world into the pages of this book.
Now, the thing that's so amazing to me is, as you began studying and reading about what the Bible calls the Antichrist, and then in the Middle East and, and talking with Muslims and beginning to understand uh, the one they consider to be their Messiah, they seem to be the same person. Exactly, exactly. What shocks a lot of people is that when you look at the basic template, the basic description of who the Antichrist is in the Bible, it is an exact description of the Islamic Savior, the Islamic Messiah figure. So in the Bible, the Antichrist is a charismatic leader, a military, political, religious leader that rises up at the end of the age. He initially comes with a spirit of peace, a spirit of tolerance and uh, unity for all faiths. And he initiates a peace treaty with the nation of Israel and the surrounding Islamic nations. And then three and a half years into this peace treaty, he violates that. He invades the land of Israel with the surrounding nations, the Islamic nations that are under his authority. And he literally comes against the Jewish people to kill them, to conquer them. He sets up his seat of authority in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. And the Bible says that the time that he has to do this is seven years. In Islam, their Messiah figure is said to come at the end of the age. They call him the Mahdi, or in English we could just say mm -hmm. the Mahdi. He comes at the end of the age to revive the Islamic empire that's been dormant for the past 80 plus years. He then invades the land of Israel to retake Israel for the Islamic world. And then he establishes the seat of his authority, of world Islamic authority, from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And according to sacred Islamic tradition, it says that the time period that he has to do this will be seven years. I, I mean, I think that is so phenomenal because I've always been told it's going to be something, someone that will emerge from Europe, from the European Union, the ten nations coming together. But this is going to get interesting. Don't go away. It's going to be supernatural. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Is there a conspiracy to have you misunderstand the last days for planet Earth? What if the basic premises taught about the end times are totally wrong? Could these premises blind people to the true signs of the Messiah's return? Best-selling author Joel Richardson takes you deep into the heart of Islam's belief system to reveal biblical truth about the end times in this compelling DVD series titled Islam and the End Times. For a donation of $30, shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1255. In this series, Joel will show you the misguided Western view of history, the Islamic strategy for the last days, the Prophet Daniel's revelation of the Islamic Empire, and so much more. Joel teaches from a Middle Eastern mindset to give you a crystal clear understanding of the end times and how Islam will play a major role with Israel. People that understand his teaching say for the first time the whole end time scenario makes total sense to me. Call now to get your copy of Joel Richardson's three DVD teaching set titled Islam and the End Times for a donation of $30. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1255. Call now or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1255 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write to Day. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Joel Richardson. We just found out in the last segment that the one that the Muslims refer to as their Messiah has a perfect description of what Christians refer to as the Antichrist. It's amazing how similar it is. Uh, Joel, in Matthew 24, it says, the Messiah says, the love of, and in the Greek it says, the love of most will grow cold in the last days. That's a pretty somber statement. The love of most will grow cold in the last days. Why do you believe that will happen? This is one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most terrifying warnings mm. in all of Scripture. Because not only does it say that the love of most will grow cold, it also says that many will betray the faith and betray each other. And, uh, of course, the end times will be a catastrophic, cataclysmic time. But to put this in context, uh, in the 1970s, there was a